Good evening, everybody. The sun is going down on this, the 26th of January, so it's Wednesday evening again. Um, and I feel I have a number of good reasons for wanting to record this evening, uh, number one, so that I could uh, have a completely free day tomorrow, hopefully. But uh, perhaps more importantly, uh, because today happens to be the Feast of St. Timothy, um, and so I'd like to share with you just a little bit of today's first reading at Mass. Um, but also, uh, Pope Francis asked us all to pray today for this very tense situation unfolding on the borders of Russia and the Ukraine. And um, strangely enough, at Mass today, we had a wonderful crowd at the 12 o'clock Mass today. Remember, we're offering the Novena prayers at the 12 o'clock on Wednesdays now. Um, so it's really encouraging, lovely to see so many of you able to be there. Thank you for your good example. And it does remind me that perhaps um, the unfolding timetable is working. We'll continue to work on that and discuss that. I'll come back to that in a few moments. But um, let's just go back for a moment to our prayer for our brothers and sisters in Russia, in the Ukraine. Uh, remind you, of course, that the Redemptorist family is all over the world. In fact, uh, I, I think we were reminded the other day we're certainly in 80 countries in the world, and we are in the Ukraine. So I would ask you to join me in praying today, along with the church across the world, for peace there. In fact, at the end of the Mass, although I forgot to mention it explicitly at Mass, and I was quite annoyed with myself, but there were so many intentions uh, that were in my mind that I shared. Um, but in fact, the music that I played was that wonderful blessing, the Gaelic blessing, which simply prays for peace. And uh, so we'll pray for peace at the end of our session today, especially uh, in this very tense situation and uh, that, uh, please God, uh, good sense will prevail. And uh, remember, as I've often quoted, reminding myself and you, that if one more person play, prays for peace, the, the world becomes a more peaceful place. Uh, St. Timothy's Feast actually used to be on the 24th of January. I, I was uh, teasing the congregation this morning, reminding everybody that, in fact, he used to have it to himself, but in the revision of the liturgy, um, he shares the feast, or the, uh, the memorial, in fact, with Titus. Um, uh, well, we're not going to get upset about that. We're very happy to share the day with Titus. Uh, but I did choose the reading uh, today to, uh, from St. Paul's uh, second letter to Timothy. And it, it's, a, it's a very tender letter. Um, in fact, he begins the letter, From Paul, appointed by God to be an apostle of Christ Jesus in his design to promise life in Christ Jesus, to Timothy... Dear child of mine, wishing you grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and from Christ Jesus our Lord. He was one of those young men that Paul recognized the Lord was choosing to serve and lead the church. Um, so he goes on, Night and day I thank God, keeping my conscience clear and remembering my duty to God as my ancestors did. And always I remember you in my prayers. I remember your tears and long to see you again to complete my happiness. Then I am reminded of the sincere faith which you have. It came first to live in your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice, and I have no doubt that it is the same faith in you as well. And then he goes on, that is why I am reminding you now to fan into a flame the gift that God gave you when I laid my hands on you. And you know, when I... Uh, read that again today, I was thinking of all the baptisms I do, because at the end of the baptism ceremony, we take a light from the Paschal candle, as I'm sure you all know, and we hand it to the godparents, if it's a little child, of course, uh, and we say, keep the flame of faith alive. It's just a wonderful moment where the Paschal candle, Jesus, risen from the dead, the light of the world, we take the candle on behalf of the child, and the instruction is, and of course that's true for all of us, in that sense we all share as we know, in the priesthood of Christ, we who have been ordained to celebrate the Eucharist and so on, uh, celebrate in, in this very special way. But we're all the body of Christ and we all are called to keep the flame of faith alive and, uh, and then fan it so that it's a, a clear light for everybody to see. So with those thoughts in mind, I just want to say another word of thanks right across the board. Do you know, extraordinarily, we, we've had a, a huge post in the last few days I've had well over 20 more Christmas cards um, and indeed some presents um, from as far away as places like uh, Seattle, um, South Norwood, 
Newark, all sorts of places. Anyway, thank you to all of you. Um, you pretty well all said well before Christmas, but as you know, we've had real problems here in Liverpool. And again, let's not be casting aspersions or laying blame. Um, it's just a joy to receive these um, gifts and these, these messages of goodwill. Indeed, I almost treated it like another Christmas day on Monday when I uh, got all the cards organised. And I thought, well, I haven't had a chance to put these cards up. So I put another string of cards up in my room. And I'm keeping the little crib there as well until the 2nd of February, as we are doing in the churches. Um, and then I'd also ordered uh, a wonderful uh, um, CD of Christmas carols from York Minster. There's a magnificent setting of Ding Dong Merrily. Um, so I played that a few times and, and sort of uh, said to everybody, I'm having another Christmas day today. So I hope anyway that uh, you're coping. The, the weather has been really remarkably calm and good. We've managed all our journeys recently to Scotland, to London, and uh, yesterday to Birmingham. We did that in the day. Andrew and I, we were very blessed. Got a, a fairly easy run down there. We're in time for all the meetings. And again, it was a richly rewarding day. I must say the community there joined in the discussions, uh, beginning with Father Dickinson, whom many of you will know. He's now 89, uh, but he's as sharp as a button, and he was, uh, he was on the button yesterday, as always. Uh, and of course, we have two of our Zimbabwean confreres there, Elias and Isaac, joined in uh, with Royston. And um, so it was a good day. And as have all the meetings been, I think uh, Father Provincial, Father Richard, uh, and uh, Charles uh, Randall, who will be going as our vocal, I mentioned that before, to the first phase of the chapter, which will be in March in Poland. And the whole European uh, teams will get together and look at the responses of all our communities, and uh, I think we've got quite a lot to say <laughs> to contribute in the preparations for the general chapter, which will then take place in Rome in September. So please keep that in your prayers, and uh, we all need that bit of encouragement, that bit of lift from time to time. One of the other intentions that uh, we prayed for, we got back last night, which meant that I was able to go to my prayer session this morning, with uh, those members of the Salvation Army who come, uh, also with Peter from St. James's Church in Woolton. Julia, unfortunately, wasn't able to join us today from St. Peter's, but uh, this was the last time that Louise Brown uh, was going to be with us. She's done a fantastic job, and many of you will know that, at Strawberry Field, this wonderful place that uh, keeps the memory of the Beatles alive. I, I, I saw more of it this morning than I had before. We actually met in person today for the prayer time. Um, and we prayed especially for Louise. We pray that uh, as she moves on, hoping to work now in the field of uh, foster care, that uh, all will go well for her and that her ministry there will be as blessed as it has been at Strawberry Field. So it's, it's, uh, it's a joy, as you know. It, it, it Really, I find it life-giving, this time of prayer with uh, our brothers and sisters in other Christian traditions. And uh, we've only just completed that octave of prayer for Christian unity, which is, I think, so precious and I hope... Um, that you remembered to, to continue to keep that intention in your prayers, not just during the last eight days, but let's keep it there all the time and try to build good relations wherever we possibly can. Um, Christ prayed that we may all be one, uh, and that prayer has to be at the heart of all our prayer too. Um, there are one or two other intentions uh, which I'd ask you to remember. I've heard that Father John Poland, the Archbishop's secretary, um, the news has come through now that he has had to have a brain tumour uh, operated on. Uh, this is very serious, obviously. It sounds as though the operation has gone well. He's still going to need some treatment, um, chemotherapy and radiotherapy, I believe. Um, obviously, we're deeply concerned. He, he is the most delightful character, John. I've got to know him quite well. Uh, he was working down at Christ the King for a while, and then the Archbishop wanted him as his secretary, so we pray for the Archbishop too, uh, this difficult time for everybody, and pray that John will come through this. We pray for the doctors and nurses who are caring for him at this time. And we continue to pray for all those people who are sick and who have asked our prayers, who are awaiting operations or have just had operations, who are at home, uh, those who maybe are struggling still, a housebound, perhaps getting a bit downhearted at times. Uh, you know who you are. We bring you before the Lord, and we pray that we will, as St. Paul was with Timothy, be concerned for one another and uh, be tender-hearted towards one another 
in that very loving way that you see Paul uh, at the beginning of that second letter to Timothy. Um, and there is a, a, a huge amount continuing to go on. Um, I mentioned that Father Poland was at, down at Christ the King. Well, many of you know the head teacher at the school down there is one of our parishioners at St Mary's, David Delaney. David wrote me a, a fairly detailed email the other day. David's extraordinary. I mean, there he is, head teacher of the school, but he's still uh, full of interest and enthusiasm for his own parish community and making a number of suggestions about how we prepare for Lent and celebrate Lent and then Easter. I think he's right uh, on the ball here. He's, uh, he's on the right lines. I think it, it is a real opportunity. I did say this a week or two ago, um, and he's picked up on it, that maybe Easter uh, could be a, a kind of very special moment in which we really do begin uh, to open up again as, as communities. Um, and again, there's no pressure here. People have got to feel that this is right. But just looking at the size of the congregations now gathering, even on a weekday today, as I say, quite remarkable. So uh, I do want to have the conversation that David's suggesting, that we do prepare well, that we get a good timetable together, that we see what more perhaps we can do. We've got Father Morris now in the community, so the options are a little bit greater than they were. Um, but we do need to talk about it, see what the possibilities are. I know that the retreat morning last Saturday uh, with Father Chris Thomas went magnificently well of a morning and afternoon at St Mary's. Um, it's only a small group there, but these are precious moments. Uh, we've got to get the heating sorted out, by the way, down there, but we're on to that. So hopefully in, in, the, uh, in the next week or two, that'll be sorted. I know hopefully the weather might get slightly warmer, but it's been pleasant enough recently. So all those things um, are not being forgotten. But nevertheless, um, there are other options emerging too uh, for a meditation group, uh, which may well take shape fairly soon, uh, again, using St. Mary's Hall. But the other thing that David suggested was, shall we work on this uh, jointly, the two parishes together? And again, I think that's a good idea, this idea that, that we ha have parishes that become sort of friendly parishes with one another, where they're able to pool their resources. Let's, let's see if we can work on that. And in that context, I also want to remind you that we've had a message from Father Chris Fallon, who looks after the diaconate program, um, asking us to make sure that we do advertise the fact that there will be another meeting very soon. You need to look at the uh, websites and the bulletin. can't remember off the top of my head where it is. Um, for anybody who's interested in the diaconate, and remember, until fairly recently, uh, we had two deacons working in the parish. I know for... Uh, John Keeley was getting towards retirement, but then Greg uh, was uh, working away for a couple of years. Um, but now we've no deacons in, in, in Bishop Eaton. And, and of course, our, our wonderful deacon down the road, Bernard, um, well, he's older than I am, so uh, that tells you <laughs> where we are with it. And he's still uh, wonderfully, graciously continuing to do terrific work down there um, with so many, with the baptisms, with the funerals, and, and with his other ministry, with the journey in faith and so on. So, uh, Bernard, we, we are grateful to you, as you know, and indeed to all those who are in ministry. And, and so I do, I do just want to get these meetings organized now. So it's a case of watch this space in the next two or three weeks uh, before the coming of Lent, which is right at the beginning of March. Um, I hope to respond now to David's suggestions and that we will be uh, able to seize the moment and, and move on. So shall we end with that prayer, that prayer now for, above all, for peace, and above all for peace in the Ukraine uh, and in Russia. Lord, you know us through and through. Help us never to grow weary of praying for peace. Touch the minds and hearts of those who are caught up in this tension and those who can influence it. Pray, Lord, that the saber rattling will calm down, that people will recognize the dignity of every human person and the right of every human person to live in peace so that we can experience the power of your loving presence both here in this world and for all eternity with you in the kingdom of heaven. We beg the prayers of our Blessed Lady, our Mother of Perpetual Succor, the Virgin of Tenderness, the Queen of Peace, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. 
May peace reign in your hearts and in your homes. May it reign in our parishes and in our schools. And may the Lord bless you and protect you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.